Thank you, Missy. And uh, you know, three years ago, love took a giant leap forward. Show us how, Steve. In legalizing same-sex marriage, Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote, the nature of marriage is that through its enduring bond, two persons together can find other freedoms, such as expression, intimacy, and spirituality. The decision whether and whom to marry is among life's momentous acts of self-definition. Many religious groups embrace the decision. My friend, Reverend Nina Gray of Bozeman's Unitarian Church, beat everyone to the punch and married several couples that same day, proudly proclaiming, I now pronounce you husband and husband as the couple kissed. I got in on the act a few months later with Randy and Sharon. But the debate hasn't ended. Despite the biblical call to love one another, some religious people insist that homosexuality is sinful. The Westboro Baptist Church, who came to Bozeman several years ago, is an example, although it's far more widespread than that. And it's not just fringe. A recent Senate candidate claims that the Bible calls homosexuality detestable and wants to make it illegal. Vice President Pence said that being gay is a choice and keeping gays from marrying is not discrimination, but an enforcement of God's idea. Gay marriage opponents are fighting back, making laws, allowing discrimination against same-sex couples, calling it religious freedom. For example, a 2016 Mississippi law allows businesses to deny services to gay couples in and in response, New York banned state-sponsored travel to Mississippi, including a New York school trip to Mississippi to play baseball. So it's worth looking at what the Bible actually says about homosexuality. The Hebrew Bible contains 24 books. Within them are 23,145 verses and just under half a million Hebrew words. All of this controversy is about one oddly worded verse of 23,000, eight words out of nearly half a million. It's Leviticus 18.22, and it says, And to a male, you will not or should not or may not lay the layings of a woman. Toavehu, it is a toava, sometimes translated as abomination, but we're going to see what it really means. First, there's lots of other conduct prohibited by this same text. Eating pig, shellfish, and many other animals, allowing different types of cattle to mate, sowing different seeds in the same field, or wearing clothes of mixed fabrics, all with good reason at the time, but that's for another day. Yet these protesters eat bacon and wear fabrics made of mixed materials, using hyperselectivity to single out only homosexual love for their ire. So let's look at the verse more carefully and see what it says. First, note it's specifically about males. No ban on lesbians. And then there's the physical problem. It seems impossible for a man to, quote, lay with a man the layings of a woman, given the different body parts. And even ignoring these technical problems, note that most other biblical prohibitions don't include this extra phrase, it is a toava, mistranslated as abomination. Key to understanding the verse is to know what a toava is. And we look at other biblical uses of the word to see that what it really means, it's a limitation, meaning it's limited to a particular cultural context and time. Two of the most famous Bible stories using this word involve the time when Joseph, who had become the number two man in Egypt, is visited by his 11 Israelite brothers. The first text tells about the meal they shared. Genesis 43 says, and they set a meal out for Joseph by himself and for the brothers by themselves and for the Egyptians who ate with Joseph alone because the Egyptians were not able to eat with the Hebrews. For that is a toavah, an abomination unto the Egyptians. You see, ancient Hebrews raised sheep and goats, so they were considered crude in high Egyptian society. Eating with them was a toavah, icky. But that doesn't mean that the prime minister of Israel can't dine with the president of Egypt today. Another biblical example of toavah is where Joseph says to his Israelite brothers, and it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and say, what is your occupation? And you'll say, your servants were keepers of cattle from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers. And you'll say this so that you may dwell in the land of Goshen because shepherds are a toavah, an abomination to Egyptians. In other words, Joseph tells his brothers to lie about their profession because being a shepherd is a toavah in Egypt at that time. 
You have to wonder why these protesters are not objecting to the many young shepherds today or famous paintings of shepherds, not to mention shepherds' creative endeavors. Bah. <laughs> and then there's one more text. Abraham's wife, Sarah, is also his half-sister. Marrying a half-sister is a toava, according to the Bible. Yet Abraham is a hero and founder of three faiths. What these and many other examples teach is that what is a toava in one time, place, and context is not one in another. The Bible is clear that its concern was Canaanite idol worship. Devotees visited shrines and employed cult prostitutes during important seasons to ensure fertility and prosperity for their fields and their herds. So given the cultural context of cultic idol worship, if applied literally today, the verse might mean, don't engage in male homosexual conduct during idol worship in order to increase your material profits. It is icky. <laughs> now this could be theoretically applied today to prohibit male homosexuality for profit in modern forms of idol worship. And that's all the Bible has to say about this. Now at this point, someone always says, but Rabbi Ed, what about Sod Sodom and Gomorrah? Didn't God destroy them because of homosexuality? But here's what the Bible quotes God as saying about the sin of these cities and why it was destroyed in Ezekiel. Now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. Therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. Finally, this verse must be considered in the context of the other 23,144 verses in the Hebrew Bible, the overwhelming message of which is do not mistreat others and love your neighbor. So this Valentine's Day, I'd like to say that we've arrived, and we have, but the reactionary forces lurk in the background, so all those who believe in love should know what the Bible really says so that we might persist. Thank you. Thank you.